The North Atlantic hurricane season officially runs from June 1st to November 30th, as that is when the most tropical cyclone development takes place in the ocean basin. However, since reliable records began up to 2023, there have been 95 off-season tropical or subtropical systems in the North Atlantic, which means they developed between December and May. These two months are also those with the most cases of off-season development, with 28 and 50 cyclones respectively. The off-season month that currently holds the record for the least amount of systems is the month of March where only one tropical cyclone developed, but it was certainly impactful at the time it occurred since it managed to reach Category 2 hurricane status. In this video, we will take a look at this anomalous tropical cyclone and the possibilities of seeing early development before the start of this year's hurricane season. Before we turn back time for a bit, here's a question for you. In which month was the last off-season storm before 2024? We'll see if your answer is the right one later in the video. March The third month of the year and one of the driest months in the Caribbean due to increased atmospheric stability. So the typical weather to expect is a lot of sunny, breezy days, maybe with some passing showers at times. It is not the time of year when locals or even tourists are concerned about a hurricane looming on the horizon, but that wasn't the case in early March 1908. Technology was not advanced as it is now, when development can be tracked and predicted by weather satellites and supercomputers. Traveling by ships was the popular means of transportation from country to country, and it was data from these ships or reports from areas affected where information was gathered to determine the path and intensity of tropical cyclones. This March tropical cyclone, while unusual for the time of year, was also very unusual in its trajectory. Most tropical cyclones in the Atlantic Basin would move to the west or northwest under the influence of winds such as the trades, but the cyclone tracked in a southwesterly direction. It was suspected to have developed well offshore the northeastern Caribbean, but intensified on approach to the islands to the equivalent of a Category 2 hurricane with 1 minute sustained winds up to 100 miles per hour. The minimum pressure was recorded to be 991 millibars in St. Kitts. The storm took a toll on the Leeward Islands, resulting in damaged buildings, boats, and crops. As it continued its southwesterly track, it weakened and subsequently dissipated offshore Venezuela. It was designated as Hurricane Juan since tropical cyclone Naaman didn't begin until the early 1950s. The atmospheric conditions normally required for tropical cyclone development include the following. Warm surface waters of at least 26 degrees Celsius, sufficient moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, and low vertical wind shear. It is likely that said conditions were present to aid in the development of Hurricane Juan and persisted long enough to allow it to intensify into a Category 2 system. It's been more than a century since it occurred, but could it happen again in the near future? There is a popular saying that history tends to repeat itself, which has been proven in many instances, and provided that average global temperatures have been on the rise since the 1800s, there is a possibility of warmer sea surface temperatures allowing many more early storms and hurricanes in the years to come. As of February 2024, sea surface temperatures across the North Atlantic are a lot warmer than average, and this is the type of chart typically observed in the early months of the hurricane season. So it means pre-season development is possible before June 1st this year, once other atmospheric conditions are conducive. Now, I hope you remember your answer to the question asked at the start of the video, so let's get to it now. In which month 
was the last off-season storm before 2024? The answer is January. In mid-January 2023, a subtropical storm formed off the northeast coast of the United States, but it wasn't given a name since it wasn't classified as such until April of the year. I hope that you found this video to be very informative, and as always, my main channel Weather Girl Danny is there to keep you constantly updated on weather activity in the Caribbean and the North Atlantic on a whole. Have a great day and see you soon!